Peace. Welcome. Welcome to the Urban Muslim Podcast, where we are re-imaging the culture, focusing on spirituality, fitness, productivity, and legacy. Your host is author, speaker, husband, and father, C.L. Edwards. Now, let's get it started. Some of you may know I left Al-Islam, became a Christian, even pursued the ministry, went to seminary, became a Christian apologist who used their experience and knowledge of Al-Islam to work against Islam with certain notable Christian apologists, appeared on Christian television, traveled and spoke at universities and conferences and churches, did sermons, the whole nine yards to try to speak against Islam. That's a whole story I need to do a, a podcast about to really break that down. Maybe that might turn into a series. But eventually, by the grace of Almighty God, Allah, in the Arabic language, I returned back to Islam. This was five years ago. And since that time, I've been trying to erase the mistakes that I made, try to erase the mistakes that I made. I've had some viral interviews that are up doing for that. But the topic of this today's episode, episode eight, we're building and trying to lay down some infrastructure on how to build a better life. These are things that I've experienced in my own life. These are things that I've read about. These are things that I've watched conferences and, and videos about. And I collected this information and I like to put it in this pod form cast so I can give to you, especially I want to give to the younger generation. I know I, I'm the masked uncle in a lot of your eyes. I'm the big uncle, big unk, but for those younger guys, I wish somebody would have told me some of the things that I've been talking about in these podcast episodes. I wish I would have known this in my 20s. I, shoot, I wish I would have known this in my 30s. It would have saved me a lot of time and a lot of headache and I wouldn't have made so many mistakes in life. But hopefully you can take this information, you know, eat the meat, spit out the bones. If you disagree with something, if, if it doesn't apply, let it fly. But take some jewels for when I'm laying down and incorporate it into your lifestyle. So today's episode, we're talking about stagnant relationships, stagnant relationships, how to move on from stagnant relationships, because there are things that are going to hinder you in life. There are many, many things that are going to hinder you in life, especially as you traverse a path to being productive, high value, to be, uh, to, to write the, 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 the way your life has been going, and to steer it in the, and, and a career and, and women you know a success is spiritual as well as physical Islam. They both exist in you are a spiritual and a physical person. What makes that's, that's what makes you, you. And you're at the same time, you're living an existence where you're living a spiritual experience and a physical experience. Everything you go through is on that format. I once had a a pastor told me, and I hope and I hang on to this because it's actually true. It's true no matter what, what spiritual system you you practice or believe in. It's you have to admit that it's true. She told me that everything starts in the spiritual, then it manifests in the physical. It starts in the spiritual, then manifests in the spirit in the in the physical. And the same thing with stagnant relationships, whether it's friendships, whether it's marriages, whether it's with your intended or engage engagements, whether it's with family members, even when things become stagnant, that means there's no flow. Like you had stagnant blood, the blood isn't flowing, stagnant water, though the water isn't flowing. And what happens when you have stagnant water? What happens if you had if you get water in the basement? And it's stagnant. It becomes the smell. It gets dirty. There's things in it that causes it to rot and not be conducive for use. You can't drink it. You can't wash with it. You can't wash your body with it. You can't wash your clothes with it. It's no good. It's stagnant. And the same thing happens in our relationships in this lifetime. So let me give a working definition of stagnant because I did the research, always doing the research. Stagnant relationships generally refer to relationship positive purpose in your lives. These relationships can hold us back from personal growth and development. It may include friendships, family relationships, or romantic relationships. 
That may, ha- may be characterized by a lack of progress or growth, negative communication patterns, a sense of obligation or guilt, or even emotional or psychological abuse. It can be difficult to let go of stagnant relationships, especially if they have been a significant part of our lives for a long time. But it's important to recognize when a relationship is no longer healthy and take a step to move on from that. Now, that's a lot to unpack, and we're going to try to unpack pack that in less than an hour. I'm not going to hold you here for a long time to hold you hostage. We're going to get straight to the point, get to the jewels. You know, we're going straight to the jewels, going straight to the safe. Give up the jewels, and then we're going to move on. Now, man, it can be physically, stagnant relationships can be physically abusive. Somebody could be physically abusing the other person, or it may be that the both parties are physically abusing each other. A lot of times it's psychological abuse. It can be verbal abuse. Verbal abuse and psychological abuse can can leave you damaged it can hurt you sometimes it can be more damaging than physical abuse because if somebody physically abuses you then it hurts and then you move on and then it's over but if somebody psychologically or abuses you that wound can stay in your mind in your psyche for months weeks years decades and some people their lives are have become completely stagnant they have not grown from the point that they were abused because of the stagnant relationship situation. They they haven't grown beyond that point. They're stuck for a whole entire lifetime and they've wasted the time. They wasted the one resource that you can never, you can't go buy. You can't go buy time. You can't reload on time. It's not a video game. So it's very important that your time is energy and you're wasting energy in a stagnant relationship. Takes, for instance, the friendships. If you're trying to move up in the world, you're trying to move up spiritually, you're trying to get a new career or start a career to begin with, you're trying to get your education, you're trying to repent and make toba in the Arabic language, as we say in Islam, which is repentance. You're trying to repent from your sins, you're trying to grow closer to God, you're trying to memorize the Quran or memorize your scripture. All those things that are praiseworthy and require focus and dedication, if you're involved in stagnant relationships, they're going to take away from your focus. They're going to take away from your time to be able to reach your goal. And you're going to find yourself not reaching your goal. And if you're finding yourself not reaching goals and not being focused, one of the, th- one of the things you need to look at is your relationships. They're said that you are the average of the five people you hang around. You might need to take it, take a look at the five people you come in contact with the most. You're the average of those five people. So you want to lose weight and you want to get in shape. You don't want to be, you don't want to be a person that's overweight. You don't want to be a person that's unhealthy. You don't want to be gluttonous, which is a sin. But the people you hang around, they are complacent. They're into gluttony. They don't see anything wrong with it. In fact, they look at you with you changing it and they tell you, oh man, don't go too far. You know, a, a girl, don't go too far with all that. You know, you being a little extreme, you going to, you're working out three times a week. You, you, you know, you're cutting back on your diet. I mean, you know, I, I, come over and um, have some cake, <laughs> you know, have some cake and ice cream. Oh, come over and have some, some of this, uh, you know, some of this chicken and barbecue sauce and, and all this food. You know, you tell people that you're, you know, you're, you're restricting your calories and you're on a diet, but then they are cooking for you. you. Let's say you live in a household, you live with your, your parents, you live with another person. You're telling them how you're, you're trying to restrict your calories and you're trying to change the shape and the, and the health of your body. And the person just completely ignores that. They don't even take you serious. They don't even take what your, your goal serious and they're cooking high fat, high caloric, high sugary foods that completely undermine your goal. You know, you're going to have to have a, you're going to one have to have some discipline to say no to that. And number two, you're going to have to have a conversation with that person. And maybe you're struggling with your discipline. You're from the beginning. You may, 
like me, I have a food addiction. I admit it, I have a food addiction. I have lost weight and I'm steadily trying to lose weight. I'm trying to get fit because like I said in one video, brothers, as a brother, brothers ain't supposed to jiggle. Brothers are not supposed to jiggle, you know. Jiggling is not good. Visceral fat is a horrible thing. It leads to all types of diseases and, and, and all types of bad things. So we got to get that in order. Plus, as a spiritual person, you don't want to be addicted or, or even, God forbid, you're worshiping something from this worldly life. Like food is a horrible God. <laughs> food it was, is not a good God that you want to worship. You want to worship the almighty. So, but you don't want to be worshiping food and being addicted to sugar and salt and to uh, being addicted to uh, cytotoxins and all, all this type of things, you know, but you're struggling and you thinking that your loved ones and your friends, they're the ones who are going to have your back. But it, most likely if you're out of shape, your friends and loved ones, a lot of them are out of shape also. Remember, I, I said just five minutes ago, you are the average of the five people you hang around. So if you have a problem in the area, most likely your friends and family have problems in that area also. And when you're trying to make a change, you're trying to go in a new direction, don't be surprised if they undermine you. Don't be surprised that they ignore you and what you have to say and what your plans are. Don't be surprised if they are jealous of you. Jealousy is real. Al-Hasid in the Arabic language. Jealousy, the evil eye. And we seek refuge from al-hasad and jealousy in the evil eye and all these things. You know, it's, it, don't be surprised if your friends and family, when you're trying to boost your education or start a new career, or, you know, you're just not hanging out and doing the things because you're, you're in the masjid or in the place of worship where you're reading scripture. You're, you got the scripture in front of you and breaking it down, breaking the words down looking up the words in the, in the original Arabic and all this other things, or you're listening to lectures or you're attending lectures and circles of knowledge. You have a, the goal of becoming a student of knowledge, whatever level you may be, whatever it is, don't be surprised if your friends and family say to you, you're acting funny style. Now, depending, now that's my culture, you know, that's kind of like urban hip hop culture. Maybe if you're from a different culture, they might say it a different way. But this is the Urban Muslim Podcast, and that's how we get down. So from the urban standpoint, don't be surprised if somebody comes at you and say, you know, you, you've been acting funny lately. You've been acting funny. Like, you don't come around when you, you're like at the masjid and all this other stuff. Don't be surprised if people try to tear you down. Like, you in a cult or something, you know. You just sitting around reading that Quran. You sitting around reading that book, you know. You sitting around listening to these lectures. What's going on with you? You know, you're going to be too skinny. You're going to end up being way too skinny, man. You're going to, you're going to turn into a skeleton if you, if you don't eat right, if you don't eat some of this food, whatever the case, whatever the case. Maybe you're trying to be a better husband and a better father, or you want to be a, a better husband and a, and a better wife, is what I meant to say. Or maybe you just want to be a husband and a wife. So you got to, so... You got to, you got to be in the role before you can receive the role. So you got to be walking as a wife before you be, can become a wife. And you got to walk as a husband before you can become a husband. You don't wait till you get married. Then now you're trying to be a husband or a wife. And that's now you're behind the eight ball, but you got to walk in those things. So that means you're making changes. You're making a mentality change. You're making changes in, in the way you operate. And People might have a problem with that. Your family members and your friends might have a problem with that. You know, oh, what, you, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? Yeah. That's how it gets down. That's how people get down. That's how people get down. Now, how, how they can hold us back, how they, and who's they? We're talking about people that you have stagnant relationships with, how they can hold us back. Check it out. Emotional drain, emotional drain. Relationships that have been unproductive or unhealthy can drain us emotionally, leave us feeling depleted, dressed, or even depressed. These negative emotions can impact other areas of our lives, 
making it difficult to focus on personal growth and development. Yes. Emotion, if you're strained emotionally, how can you how can you focus on your goals? You got to have first of all, you got to have the time and you got to have the mindset. You got to have the opportunity. You got to have the environment. But if you're emotionally drained, you're not going to be able to step into those things or utilize those those things because your mind is going to keep going back to that to that argument you had with your family member or with your your spouse or with your friend. You're going to go back to that thing they, they, they called. You remember, they called you. You said you were funny acting. Now you can't stop thinking about it. They said I was funny. What do you mean I'm funny acting? What does that mean? How am I funny acting? You funny acting. Now, I said, look, you're not even focusing. You may have, you, you set something on the calendar where you're going to study for an hour or two hours or three hours. You're studying for a certification so you can make more money, so you can move up in your career or your, or your craft. And instead of utilizing that time for what you schedule it for, you're busy. Your mind is just busy, caught up in this, this, these, this thing that you have with this person you have a stagnant relationship with. It holds you back. Let's move on. Negative influence. We, we just spoke about that in a general fashion. Negative influence. Stagnant relationships can also have a negative influence on us, leading us to adopt unhealthy behaviors or thought patterns. For example, a toxic friend who is always gossiping or criticizing others can influence us to adopt similar behaviors, which can impact our own self-esteem and relationships. No doubt about that. That goes into that goes into what we were speaking about. You're the average of the five people you are around the most. If in your circle people like to gossip about other people and gossiping is a sin, you're biting the the back of your sister or your brother or your brother is something that can lead you to the hellfire in Islam. And if you crack that Bible open or that that Torah open, you'll see the same exact principle. It's the same exact principle. But you know, you know it's wrong to gossip about people. You know it's wrong to be all up spilling the tea, spilling the tea as they say, and being all up this person you hang around with or you you get on the phone with. They're, the first thing they, that comes out that starts coming out of their mouth after they say hello, hi, what's up, girl, or whatever the whatever, or what they, it, what, or, you know, what they said, or what did you do? You know what happened to such and such, and then all this other stuff, which again takes away from your focus, and it leads to you now. You're gossiping now. You're all up in somebody else's business instead of minding your own business. Hmm. In the, in, the, in, the, in, in, in the circumstances where you're, you have spiritual goals, you have goals within the dean or the religion, you're trying to be closer to God. Well, let me tell you this. If you're engaging in gossip and tail-bearing and, and, and biting the back of your brothers and sisters, how are you going to get close to God when you're involved in the activity that God, Almighty Allah, hates? He hates the activity. He hates the sin. But you're trying to get closer to him at the same time that keeps bring, bringing you and dragging you back to that place. Yeah, you can say, well, you just need to have more discipline and not do. Yeah, you do need to have more discipline. But, man, influence is real. Influ Why would we have commercials? Why do we have YouTube? Why would I have this, this podcast if influence wasn't real? So you got to watch who and what is influencing you. Limited growth, limited growth. Relationships that are not supportive of our personal growth can limit our potential. If we are constantly surrounded by people who do not share our aspirations or goals, we may struggle to find the motivation or support we need to achieve them. Now, let's say you want to be deaning, you want to be religious, you want to be pious, you want to be righteous, but in your household, the people in your household, they're not into that. They don't want that. At best, they, they claim some spiritual system. Or maybe they don't claim anything at all. But you're trying to be that. But again, you are the average of the five people you hang around the most. How is that conducive for you to achieve this spiritual goal? 
or maybe it's a goal as far as education. You want to be the first. Maybe you don't come from a, a family of doctors and engineers. People barely graduate high school in your family, but you want to be the first person to get a higher degree in the, in the uni, in the university. You want to be the first. But the people in your neighborhood, the people in your family, they think that's a waste of time. Well, at least that's what they tell you because they're jealous of you. They're jealous and, they, and you doing this makes them feel self-conscious. You, you pursuing righteousness, you pursuing education, you pursuing a higher salary and, and a better career, you pursuing a better body and, and better health and fitness, you pursuing, you eliminating the character flaws in yourself, you going to counseling, you going to uh, your place of worship, all that, all these positive things, it makes them feel self-conscious about themselves. See, hanging around you and you're just, we're just alike. We're both negative people. We're both gossips. We're both lazy. We both uneducated. We both don't have a career. It makes me feel better. But now you're changing. You're acting, fu you're funny acting now. You're funny acting now. And they're going to try to hold you back like that. Holding onto the past. Holding, how can you go for? Can you go forward holding on to the past? That's common sense. Holding on to the past. Relationships that have run their course may be holding us back from keeping us tethered to the past. This can be especially true for family relationships, where a sense of obligation or duty may prevent us from moving on from unhealthy dynamics. We all have a family of origin. And there are positive things and there are negative things about our families of origin. Some of us may be a little more negative on the negative side than on the positive side. But if you're trying to have a positive mental mentality, a positive life, and you come from a negative background, family of origin, it's almost like you don't even fit in any longer. When you, go, when you call on the telephone, when you go back home, when you come back home, it's almost like you're the alien. You're not even the same person any longer. You don't, what they're talking about, you have no concern about. And what you want to talk about, they don't have any concern to talk about. You know, you want to talk about having better mental health and they're looking at you like you're crazy. Like, what are you talking about? Like, you talk, that's some funny talk. That's weird talk. What are you talking about? Like, what are you talking about that for? It's, uh, are you crazy now? You know, so there, there's a lot of people who think ment good mental health, if you're concerned about mental health at all, if you watch a documentary or you read an article about me mental health, you read a book, uh, there's something wrong with you. Is something wrong with you? Are you, are you going crazy? Are you depressed? Are you on those pills? What's going on with you? No, no, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm trying to improve myself. As if improving yourself is something because you're outside of the culture of your family, the dynamic of your family. You're outside of that. Every family has a culture. Every neighborhood has a culture. Yet you were raised in the hood. You come from the hood and you have love for the hood. That's where you come from. That's where you were built. You, and you want to go back to the hood like Nipsey Hussle did. Nipsey Hussle, the rapper in California who was murdered. And a few years ago, he was an international media star, rapper, businessman, and he wanted to have his business, the Marathon Store, in his hood. But then there's an individual in his hood who's completely jealous of him, and he shoots him dead and kills him. Haters can kill you. They can kill you physically, or they can kill you spiritually or mentally. Watch out for the haters. Mark the haters out and watch out for them. Do not let them emotionally drain you. Do not let them be a negative influence to you. Do not let them limit your growth. And do not, call, do not let them tether you to the past. Especially you come around your family and they want to bring up old stuff. Another thing I tell you, you're trying to make a positive change in your life. Sometimes your family, they knew you before when. Your friends, they knew you before when. The neighborhood knows you before when. And 
they can't accept that you're changing or that you have changed. And they keep wanting to bring up that old stuff. They want to bring up, you know, things that you did that you've already made amends for and that you repented for. They want to keep bringing it up because they want to bring you back down. They want to hold you back down. You're getting healthy. You're losing weight. You're getting muscular. You know, you're getting a little swole. And they want to talk about how it used to be fat. You know, you're becoming more spiritual. You're pursuing a path of righteousness. And they want to talk about how you used to commit zina, fornication and, adul and adultery, for those who might not know. They want to talk about how you committed a crime back when you remember you was 15 and you got caught doing blah, 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 blah. And they keep wanting to bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. And they la they're laughing. But are they laughing with you or are they laughing at you? There's, if, you can read the, if you can read between the lines and you have a sense of vibration, you can sense a person's vibe. You can tell there's a negative vibe that, yeah, it's, on one hand, it's kind of like yeah, they're, yeah, they're kind of poking fun at you. They're capping on you. But in reality, there's something else there. There's something really negative there where they're trying to humiliate you because they can't accept that you're above them. They want to bring you back down like crabs in a barrel. And you might, you either going to have to, you definitely have to mark these people out and know who they are and know what they're all about. You may have to reduce the time you spend with them. Maybe you, you love the person. You have this relationship with them. You don't, you're not trying to cut ties with them, but you may have to reduce the time you get on the phone with this person. Reduce the time you're texting back and forth with this person. Reduce the time you're in this person's presence. You may have to meet this person in a neutral place. You don't want to invite them to your house or to your apartment. And they're going to bring in all this vibrations. Or maybe they're going to bring in some demons and some, some gin up into your house. You don't want all that. Or it may be the fact that you need to cut the person off altogether. It may be a person you need to cut off. Or maybe you only see this person. You only go back to the old neighborhood maybe once a year. Instead of going back every week and every weekend, maybe I'll pop through once a year. I'll say hi. I'll say what's up to everybody. Oh, you remember back when we were in high school? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you go about your business. That may be the thing that needs to happen. But if, you know, a lot of times people make, it, make you feel like you're obligated. You're obligated to get on the phone with them. You're obligated to text back and forth with them obligated to hang out with them. You're obligated to come back to the hood. You're obligated to come back to mom's house. You're obligated to do these things. Yeah, in, in Islam, you're, you do have an a obligation in the Sharia to not completely cut ties with your blood relationship, except for certain situations. And if you want to know more about those, we can discuss those, or you can go to a person of knowledge and they can explain that to you. But in general, you're not supposed to cut ties with your family member. But what does that mean? How does that play out in everyday life? Does that mean you got to get on the telephone with this person every single day? You got to make a, a weekly call to this person every day? You got to test back and forth? You got to go over their house? They're coming over here? No, it doesn't mean that. See, I can, I can reduce my time that I'm spending with you. I can mitigate the negativity that's flowing out of your mouth and from you. I can, I can mitigate that and still keep my ties with you in a way. Yeah. Yeah. Dealing with family members who don't want to progress in life. It, now this is another thing. Maybe the person is not actively trying to hold you back, but they're dead weight. Like the prophet Lut, Lot, alayhi salam, peace be upon him. We all know the story of Lot and Sodom. His wife was of those who lagged behind, as the Quran says. In the Bible, it says she lagged behind and God transformed her into a pillar of salt. It wasn't that she's, it doesn't record that she said something like, oh, why are we leaving? Why we got to leave? Why can't we just stay here? It, it doesn't say, in scripture, it doesn't say that. It doesn't say, oh, no, leaving is a really bad idea. Why are you listening to these angels? You need to listen to me. No, she doesn't say any of this thing. What she, all, her crime was that she kept looking back. She kept looking back and she, and she was like, he's running far ahead. He's taking his daughters by hand and they're running as fast as possible. But 
the wife, she's like 10, 20 feet backwards and she's looking back at Sodom and she, you know, she maybe had a tear in her eye. Like, why we got to leave Sodom? I like it here. Yeah, it's, they're in sin and they're crazy, but I like it here. And some people like it. The place you're trying to escape, the place you're trying to escape, the environment you're trying to get away from, the mindset you're trying to escape, it may be the person you, that you're involved in an entanglement in a stagnant relationship. They like it. They like it. They like having a, they like gossip. They like negativity. They like tearing people down. They like being fearful and having a fear-based mindset. They like being stagnant and inactive. They like overeating and being addicted to food. They like being ignorant. Whether it's the doing your worldly life they, they're in the, or the religion, they just like being ignorant. And they enjoy it. It's part of their identity and personality. And you're trying to do something else. And that's how they cause damage to you. Because it's like pulling dead weight. It's like pulling dead weight. Dealing with family, family members who don't want to progress in life. Challenges of outgrowing family members who resist growth. Different values and beliefs. As we grow and develop, our values and beliefs may change. This can lead to a disconnect with family members who hold different beliefs or who are not supportive of our new ideas and perspectives. Mm. Different goals and aspirations. As we set new goals and aspirations for ourselves, we may find that our family members do not share the same ambitions. This can create tension or conflict, particularly if family members do not understand or support our choices. I mean, let me give another example from scripture. What about the prophet Noah? Peace be upon him. He preached for 900 plus years. He was told by Allah that these people, they're not going to believe. They're not going to believe the, the flood is coming. So he's ordered to build this ship. The people are mocking him. They're winking at him. They're like, look at this guy, man. He's building a ship. What are you building a ship for? Are you crazy? You're talking about religious fanatic. He's hearing voices telling him to build a ship. He's crazy. And some of his family members believed and they helped him. But in the Quran, it, it talks about how his, his own flesh and blood son didn't get in the ark. His, his flesh and blood son was like, I'm going to go, I'm going to go up on this mountain. I'll be okay. And Noah, peace be upon him. He's like, you're not going to be okay. You need to come with me. Come get in the, come get in the ark. Come get in the ark. Come, I'm, I got the word of almighty God. Come get in the ark. I'm telling you. And he's not trying to listen. He wants to go with the, the people who are going to be destroyed and he gets destroyed. It may be, and it may hurt. And I'm, it's going to hurt. It may be that person you're in a stagnant relationship. You're just going to have to let that person go and they're just not going to get it and they're going to be destroyed. Yeah. Back to the list. Unhealthy dynamics. Unfortunately, some families may have unhealthy dynamics that prevent individuals from fully growing and developing. For example, a family member who is emotionally or psychologically abusive may prevent others from reaching their full potential. You know, you got that auntie, that uncle, that grandmother, that mother, that father, that sister, that brother, that cousin, who is just absolutely, completely toxic and negative. You know, I don't know what you, I don't know why you, you trying to go down to that college. You know, you stupid. <laughs> I remember back in, when you was in third grade, boy, you couldn't even, you couldn't even do addition. Now nah, he's trying to go to college. <laughs> Physical distance, physical distance. Sometimes outgrowing one's family or origin may simply be a matter of physical distance. Moving away from home or building a life in a new location can create a sense of separation from family members, which can be challenging, but can also allow for personal growth and independence. Hey, you might have to physically move away. 
you might have to get out the your your the old neighborhood, the old city. You may need a new city to produce a new you and a new day. You may have to go to a different city, a different block, a different location. Get away from the family and the friends and everybody that known you because they're going to try to hold you down. There's something I remember in the Bible from Isa, Jesus, peace be upon him. It talks about how he went to Nazareth, to his old place that he grew up, and the people couldn't accept who he was. They couldn't accept that he was a prophet now. They couldn't accept that he was anointed now. And isn't this Mary and Joseph's son? And he's walking around talking about, what is he talking about? We saw him grow up. And and, 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 and the passage talks about, and it kind of, not exactly verbatim, but it talks about how a prophet is not even accepted in his hometown. Not that me and you are prophets, we're not. But the new you, the goal-orientated you, the positive you, the righteous you, the straightforward, straight path you, the muhmin, the Muslim you, it may be that those stagnant relationships, those stagnant environments, they can't accept that from you. They just, they, they're too stuck on who you used to be. They're too stuck on how you used to act and how you used to talk. They can't even accept what you're, what you're trying to do. Even when it's clearly manifested that you're on to something new and you're doing better, they can accept it from you. And they will not accept it from you. Strategies to navigate difficult conversations. Because like I said, in certain situations, you may not be able to completely cut these stagnant relationships off. You can mitigate them, but you can't completely cut them off. So what happens when you have to have a conversation with these people? How do you navigate that? Check it out. The importance of setting healthy boundaries. The importance of setting healthy boundaries. I'm going to tell you personally, there are certain families and fa family members and friends I had to set new boundaries with because I was trying to do something new in my life and people were transgressing those boundaries. They were trying to interact with me based on the old me and old boundaries. And I had to let them know, even if I had to raise my voice a little bit, I had to let them know, listen, it's a new day. It's a new age. And there has to be new boundaries now. We got to draw up some new boundaries. Things are not working like they did 10 years ago or five years ago or even two years ago or even last year. There's some new boundaries and I need you to respect that. And if you can't respect it, then I just I have to I have to I have to pull back away from you. I don't want to pull back away from you. I love you, but I'm going to have to pull away from you or cut off or go completely non-contact with you if you don't want to respect these new boundaries. And you have to, you don't have to yell, you don't have to scream, but you have to speak up for yourself and advocate for yourself. And you have to be clear about what these new boundaries are and why you're setting them. You have to be clear to the person what you're expecting out of them and what and how this, the new relationship between us is going to have to be for us to keep this relationship going. Now check it out. It's important to note that outgrowing one's family of origin does not necessarily mean cutting ties completely or severing relationships. Instead, it may simply involve creating healthy boundaries or developing a new understanding of family relationships. Ultimately, the goal is to create a sense of interdependence and personal growth while still maintaining a positive relationship with family members. Like sisters. If you've put on the hijab or the niqab and the jilbab, the whole nine yards, and, you know, you're going back around your friends and your family, they're still dressing like, you know, how people dress nowadays. And you're dressed based on righteousness now and based on knowledge now. They're still stuck in the days of ignorance. They're still, they're making comments about what you're wearing. They're making comments about you being brainwashed or or some man is making you and you don't even have a man in your life but they, they keep accusing that some man is making you do this you you're gonna have to set boundaries with them listen this is my re, this is my dean this is my religion i'm wearing a head covering because i'm muslim even some of the christians head covering is in the bible 
maybe you decided you want to make you want to wear a Christian head covering or a Hebrew Israelite head covering head covering and you're going to have to set a boundary with people. You can't mock my religion. You can't mock my spirituality. You can't crack. This is this. I don't mind cracking jokes with you and playing the dozens and capping and all that good stuff. That's what we do in the, from the neighborhood. But this is hands off. You can't keep making uh, you can't keep mocking this or again, I'm going to have I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to debate with you back and forth. I'm not going to keep I'm not going to disrespect you the same way you keep disrespecting me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just block you on my phone. <laughs> That's, I'm going to block you on my phone and I'm going to block your email. So I don't I don't I don't deal with you any longer. So you you tell me what you want. How do you want this to go? OK. Time and space. Set limits on the amount of time you spend with family members or the frequency of your interactions. This can help you maintain our sense of independence and priority prioritize our needs. Communication. Communicate your needs and boundaries clearly and respectfully. That's what I said. For example, you might let family members know that you prefer not to discuss certain topics or that you need space to process your thoughts and feelings, right? Emotion and mental health. Prioritize your emotional and mental health by setting boundaries around what types of behaviors or interactions are acceptable. So you have the right to determine what's acceptable to you, what behaviors, what conversations, what topics you're willing to engage in and discuss. And you shouldn't let somebody make you feel, make you feel obligated to discuss certain things about your life. Everything in your personal life doesn't need to be discussed with everybody. There are certain friends and family you don't need to discuss. Every, you don't need to discuss what's going on in your marriage. This is for somebody. This is for you. This is somebody that needs to hear this one. You don't need to and you better not discuss everything that's going on in your house with all your friends and family. It will destroy your marriage. It will destroy your relationship. I'm telling you this. I've seen it and experienced it. Don't do it. Emotional, I already said that. Independence. Set boundaries around your independence and decision making. For example, you might choose to make your own choices around your career, relationships, or lifestyle without seeing approval or permission from family members. When I... When I was an ex-Muslim and I decided to return back to Al-Islam, you know, the first thing that occurred in my mind, I needed to set a boundary about who I discussed this with and how far that discussion is going to be. And I'm not getting, I'm not debating my decision with people. The day that I announced that I had returned to Al-Islam, my phone blew up. I got 30, I got 30 calls over 30 calls that day. And, and the days after I was getting calls and calls and calls and people were asking me, why did you do this? Why? I can't believe you did this. And it wasn't up for discussion. I made my, I'm an adult. I made my decision. This is the direction I'm going in in life. And it, we're not going to have a debate. We're not going to go back and forth in person or on telephone. You respect my, my decision or else. Certain people, I didn't answer the phone. I did not answer the phone for certain people. Cause I didn't want to go there. I wasn't going there. And in fact, I kept, I didn't go completely, totally public with my decision for a long time. I didn't, dis didn't discuss it. I didn't do an interview about it. I didn't do an interview about it until a year later, almost one or two years later. Cause I wanted to sit on my decision. I wanted to, I wanted to live it out for a little bit before I started talking about it in public. So that may be for you. You need to hear that. You've made a decision. You've weighed all the pros and cons. You looked at the facts and the figures. You, you, maybe there's a trusted person you may have discussed it with. But when you make your decision, you're an adult now. You don't have to make, you don't have to have a conference call with every, all your friends and your family and your neighborhood and everybody in the community. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. And you shouldn't, Allow somebody to make you feel obligated to do that. Personal space. 
Respect your personal sp respect your own personal space and privacy by setting boundaries around physical touch, personal belongings, and even information about your personal life. I just said all that, right? This is strategies to navigate difficult con conversations, the importance of setting healthy boundaries. Toxic friendships. Let's get into that. Toxic friendships. Let's get into that. All right. Identifying toxic friendships. A toxic friendship is a, re friend a relationship in which one or both individuals engage in harmful, negative, or abusive behaviors that create an unhealthy dynamic. This can manifest in a variety of ways, but some common characteristics, characteristics of, a to of a toxic relationship may include the following. Now listen up. Listen up. One-sided one -sided or unbalanced. One person in the friendship may constantly take more than they give without considering the needs or the feelings of the other person. Now, obviously, that could be the first thing that comes about is money. Somebody's borrowing money, but it, it may not even be that. Somebody drains you emotionally. They're constantly draining and taking from you emotionally, but they're never there for you emotionally. They all they always want to hear they want to call you and use you as a free counselor or a psychologist. They want you to sit and listen to all their problems. But when you have an issue, when something's bothering you, they can't be found. They don't have the they don't have time. They don't want to hear it. That's that's a person you're giving more than you're receiving. A relationship is give and take, but all you do is give, 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 and the person is draining you out. One-sided or unbalanced. One, we said that. <laughs> Manip manipulative and controlling. One person may use man manipulation or control tactics to get their way to keep the other person in the friendship. This can include emotional manipulation, guilt, tr guilt tripping, and coercion. And if somebody is using, if somebody is trying to dominate you and use you in a, in a, in a way that's only for their good and benefit, and again, they're draining you out, you get no benefit out of this, you're in a toxic, toxic friendship. You're in a toxic friendship. What's next? Criticism and judgment. One person may constantly criticize or judge the other person making them feel unworthy or inadequate. This can take the form of constant put-downs, insults, or belittling, belittling comments. There's somebody I know, a friend, a friend that I had. And, you know, you know, we joke. Where I come from, we joke with each other. We cap on each other. But the vibrations I was getting is this was more than just the, this person trying to, you know, lighthearted capping and joking, that they were being really malicious about it. They were, there was something behind it. It wasn't just that they were, they were really trying to put me down and mock me. And because of that, and a whole bunch of other reasons, that was just the last straw. And I, I don't speak to the person and I don't deal with the person any longer. Because I realized, you know, the whole time that we had been friends, the whole situation was toxic. And we had been friends for a long time. And that whole situation is, that, has, that whole situation was toxic. And I finally really realized it as an adult, but and I, now I don't have time for that. I don't have time for toxic people like that. Lastly, a lack of respect. One or both individuals may not show respect for each other's boundaries, personal space, or privacy. They may also disregard others' feelings, opinions, and beliefs. Dishonesty and betrayal. And there's, and there is one more after that one. One person may lie or portray the other's trust, leading to a breakdown in, in friendship. Another, I'll give you another personal thing to happen as a family member. I was trying to build my relationship with this family member. I was helping them out, but they were constantly lying to me. And I knew they were lying to me and I was catching them up in lies constantly. All, it's like every time the person opened their mouth, they were telling a lie. Like every conversation had a lie included in it, and I just couldn't take it anymore. And I just had to move back, move back away from the person. I can't deal with that. 
steps to let go of a toxic friendship. Now, I'm giving you, I'm giving you jewels. I'm giving you steps. Now, you should study this, study this video like it was a university lecture. Not that I'm, you know, patting myself on the back or anything like that. But listen, check it out. I did the research for you so you can use these things. Steps to let go of a toxic relationship. Disunity and infighting in the community. Now, that's going to be next after this. The way you let go of a toxic friendship is, now, friendship is not blood. There's a difference between blood and family ties and friendships. Now, you can have a friendship where you're close as a brother or a sister. That's true. I've experienced that. But if you've outgrown the person or maybe you're just now realizing how toxic this relationship really was, depending on how toxic it is, how, depending on how close you are, you may decide to just cut ties altogether just to go. Just, now, do you, do you let the person know? I would think in, in the most cases you would let the person know that you ain't, hey, I can't deal. This, I'm not dealing with you. And these are the reasons why you disrespect me. You cross my boundaries. You disrespect my beliefs. You disrespect my lifestyle. You're, you're, you're a bad influence. But it may be that doing that causes more problems. It causes more arguments. If you know if the person is, 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 is the type of person that if you start talking to them like that, they're just going to go off on you and it's going to be a big, crazy, sick mess. You might just ghost the person, man. You know, I hate you. I don't see. A lot of times ghosting is a bad thing. You know, it's kind of rude. But there's some people that just need to be ghosted. There's some people that just need to be ghosted. And, you know, you have to determine who's who in, in that scenario. Also, disunity and infighting in the community. Now, we've been talking on a one-on-one -on -one, uh, kind of a personal relationship. But as far as the community, whether you're talking about a faith community or whether you're talking about an ethnic community or just a community of people who live who may be a multicultural type of community these same things that i talked these same toxic stagnant things that you see in families that you see in friendships can exist in a community level maybe you attend a place of worship where the people are always gossiping people are always putting people down People, it's it's negativity, and you may need to get away from those people. You may I experienced that also. I experienced that also. I was a part of what some people call the Salafi movement. A Salafi, uh, the Salafi manhaj. Knee deep into it. And there were there are a lot of good people who are Salafi that I know and I still know to this day. But within that sect and i'm not talking verbal i'm not talking linguistically you know following the salaf is a part of that's just a regular part of islam that's being a muslim but as far as the group they may call the groups they may refer to them by themselves as salafi the salafi masjid in town all that other stuff you may need to get away from those people because they're so toxic and they're holding you back in fact, and people behave in these manners and enjoy these groups in the name of getting closer to Allah and closer to God. And a lot of times when it's toxic like that, it ends up having the exact effect. Because I can't tell you how many people that fell off the dean in these communities. And I can't tell you how many people apostated who were in these communities. So don't that that negativity can infect you and it can in, it can infect you so bad it can destroy you it can destroy you don't let don't let a stagnant relationship destroy you of any type including communities you may have to distance yourself from a particular community you may have to move somewhere else you may have to go somewhere else you may have to drive an extra 10 minutes if you got to drive an extra 10 minutes to go to another masjid that is not on that type of time there's more positive and you can have course you can you can you can perform the salat you can you can focus and the people are smiling and giving you salam you can interact with the people 
it's better to just drive that extra five or ten minutes or however. Uh, whatever, whatever it takes for you and your family. You're in this, this toxic community and you're going to, you get married. Now you're going to bring your spouse into that toxic community. You want to bring your, your new children in. No. And you know, it's toxic. You got to value yourself enough to, dis, to cut yourself from, off from these people. And if you refuse to cut yourself, that means you got some type of codependency relationship with that community. You got some low self-esteem about yourself. You can't say no. You can't break yourself off. That's kind of like a cult mentality. And you get into that. And as I said, there's Islamic, from an Islamic standpoint, there's things you have to understand. When it comes to blood, you cannot fully cut off ties. But there's things you can do. We discussed those things, the things that you can do, setting boundaries, limiting the time, limiting the subjects of discussion, things like this. Here's a, here's a verse from the Quran. No, uh, sorry, I'm sorry. This is not a verse from the Quran. This is not a verse from the Quran. This is from a, a fatawa. This comes from Islam Q and a dot info. This is fatawa 701 and it's quoting. This is the quote. If they are kufar, speaking about your family members, if they are kufar or are wrongdoers, then cutting off ties with them for the sake of Allah is how one maintains the tie. Huh? Let me read that again. If they are kufar or are wrongdoers, then cutting off ties with them for the sake of Allah is how one maintains the tie. On the condition that one tries to warn them and tells them that what they that the reasons for cutting the tie is because of their de deviation from the truth. This is from Abi Hamza, a scholar. May Allah have mercy upon him. Again, that's from Islam Q&A, Fatwa 701. So it may be the way you're... <laughs> it's deep. It may, it may be the way that you are keeping the ties is by cutting the person off. Because it's almost like... It's almost like... If the person has a wound, there's something in the skin and you, and you use a forcep or some type of device to pull the thing out of their skin, it's going to hurt. They have something stuck in their skin or something in their eye and you pull it out or you get it out. The, the, the medicine can sometimes hurt just as much as the wound or the sickness. But what's hope, what you're hoping to happen is, yeah, you're going to experience this, this pain, but in the long run, it's going to heal you. So you still being in this stagnant, toxic relationship with this person gives the person the sense that it's A-OK -okay for them to live this way and keep being this way. But you cutting off contact or distancing yourself from that person is like a shock to the mind. It may let this person know that, hey, this is serious. This is not a game. I don't approve of this. This is not a this behavior is not a not something to be approved of. You need to repent. You need to make toba. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, peace and blessings be upon him, said in a hadith that's in Bukhari and Muslim. It is not permissible for a man to forsake his Muslim brother for more than three days, each of them turning away from the other when they meet. The better of them is the one who gives the greeting of salam first. So this is the principle that we, this is an Islamic principle for the Muslims and that you must understand. You can't abandon your brother for more than three days. And the first one who turns back to his brother and gives him the greeting of salam, that's the better of the two. You don't want to end up like, you don't want to end up like Cain and Abel, as people in the English language know them. He, where one brother hates his other brother to the point he destroys his brother. You don't want to destroy your brother. You don't want to destroy your sister. The whole, even if you boycott your brother and sister, the point of it is not to destroy them. So you're not making dua, may Allah destroy you, may Allah break your back. Oh, you're not doing all that stuff. That's not the point. You don't want to see the person. You're not trying to punish the person. You're actually trying to bring the person around. You're trying to help the person. And you're taking a massive action to do it, but that's what you may have to do. And even if you're, you and your brother or you and your sister are not on speaking terms because you're angry with, with each other for some particular reason, you don't stay angry forever. 
You may experience that anger, experience, I can't believe they said this. I can't believe they did this. But you're going to have to let it go. 